We're going to bounce to a panel of three inspirational humans who you absolutely must know. There is Danny Thompson, who used to fry chicken at a gas station, is now a software engineer. April Sprite, who used to work in fashion merchandising, is now a software engineer. And Ayesha Brown, who is ex-military, now working in technology. So these three people are incredibly inspirational and so authentic, and they are going to share their journeys with you right this second. Are we ready for you three? Hey, thank you, Seth and Donna. I'm so excited to be here and part of this event. To be completely honest, I'm such a huge fan of Donna that like, I'm kind of fangirling on the inside, but I'm trying to keep this calm, cool demeanor on the outside to make sure you know that you know I'm here for the right reasons. But uh, the way I always start this off is my journey to tech was not the traditional one. And the reason why I got into tech was because of a rapper. This rapper invested ten million, well, several million dollars into a tech company, and he was giving an interview about this on TV. And this kind of was interesting to me because I never knew why someone like that, from my kind of background, my kind of area, would ever invest into a tech company. And he said he was learning how to code. Now this blew my mind because I never knew someone like from my background could learn how to code. I thought this was reserved for the PhDs and the rocket scientists of the world. I never knew an average individual could ever be in this field. And so he starts learning how to code, and the reasoning was profound. He said, why wouldn't you want to know how the thing that you touch 90% out of your day operates? Like, why don't we have a basic understanding of how computers work? Like, I have a basic understanding of my body. I know if I'm sick, either A, I need to go to a doctor, I'm not going to make it, or B, I can take some Robitussin and ride the side, I'll be A-OK. -okay. Or if my car makes a weird sound, I'm like, oh, I need to go see a specialist. So why don't I have the same understanding of how this computer operates? Like, why is the limit of my understanding opening YouTube.com and watching videos of cats playing around with yarn, right? So he starts learning how to code, and so do I, and I get on freecodecamp.org, and I start learning. And I'm going and going, and I find out about this thing called meetups. And I go to this meetup, and at this time in my life, I, I know HTML and CSS. I make it like a very bad application, very simple, where you enter like the URL of an image, and I add some coloring on top. It's like a really, really bad filter. But it's safe to say at this point in my life, I could cure cancer with code. I can't. I'm terrible. You know, it's stuck. But... So I go into this uh, meetup and I very quickly realize that I don't know anything. And people are saying like these foreign language to me, like C sharp and Java and SQL. And I don't know what any of this means, but now I'm hooked. I've been introduced to this brand new breadth of knowledge that I didn't know existed. So I start learning. I go home and I start learning. I start learning about JavaScript. I start learning ES6 functions. And I go to that next meetup. I'm like, well, do you know what an ES6 function is? Do you know what an error function is? Now I start going learning more and more and more. And I go start learning SQL. And I go to that next meetup. I'm like, well, do you know what a SQL table is? Do you know how to do a SQL query? And I start learning more and more and more. I start learning about Java. And I go in to that next meetup. I said, well, do you know Spring Framework? Do you know how to do this in Java? And now I'm a part of this amazing community of phenomenal developers that are there that just want to help as many people as they can. And I love being a part of this. And I truly preach meetups all the time because meetups genuinely changed my life. If it wasn't for finding a supportive community of developers, I don't know if I would have ever been able to make that transition to tech. Because one thing you have to understand, this entire time, I was working in gas stations frying chicken. I fried chicken. I had a PhD in fried chicken. I could fry the best chicken around. I gave Chick-fil-A a run for their money. But... I was stuck not making anything. I'd work 80, 90 hours a week and I'd make just enough money to be broke. And things were getting hard and I, I found myself really questioning like, how am I, how am I gonna, what am I gonna do? Like, how, how am I gonna pay all these bills? I, I got a kid on the way out. I don't know how I'm gonna make it. And I go and I start progressing and I start getting involved in these communities. And I remember going on these interviews and I was doubting myself. I'd have all this imposter syndrome and this doubt coming to me like, Danny, they don't need you. They don't want you. They want professional developers. They want people with experience. They don't want someone that smells like fried chicken when they come into this interview because you're coming from the gas station. They don't want you. They want someone that knows what they're doing. And that's not you. My doubts, my insecurities. Everything that I doubted about myself, I made it. I'm Danny Thompson, and I'm a software engineer. Thank you. I'm so happy to be a part of this, and I hope you find some inspiration today to make sure you get to where you're going. And with that being said, I kick this off to iAsia. Man, 
Oh, daddy, that was passionate. Thank you. I'm a plus one on the fangirl and for Donna too, because I'm a Donna fan. I told her uh, on Twitter earlier that I don't have enough stickers on my computer yet, but I'm going to get there. So I am taking donations if you're sending stickers. My journey to tech was a little different. And I spent 16 years in the United States military. I spent four years in the Air Force, four years in the Air Force, and I knew I wanted to be a Marine. But I was 17 when I joined, and my dad was like, nope, not going to happen. You're not going to the Marine Corps. All my uncles were Marines. All my uncles were crazy. They were wild. He was like, no, you can go in the Air Force. So I did my four years in the Air Force. I was a mortuary specialist. And what I learned in that job was that nobody talks back. And it was lonely. So I was like, I don't, I don't want to do that no more. So when I went to the Marine Corps, they were like, what do you want to do? I said, I want to be somewhere where the people talk. They were like, cool, great. Communications. And I was in communications. But I was on the hardware side. So more, more things than people. And from there, I was like, well, I want to do something where I get to talk to people. So I went on recruiting duty. Recruiting duty really, really changed my life because that's where I learned that I love to bring people along. I love to make people smile. I like to love to see people's dreams come to fruition. Like I would literally just sit there and listen to people tell me about their lives and what they wanted to do. And I would try my best to match them up with something that fit or at least led them towards their passion. And for me, that, that's where I got all of my enjoyment. That's all my enjoyment. And then came time one day I'm sitting at work and I'm like, all right, I'm done. I want to do something else. And the day I decided that I was going to leave the Marine Corps and I did 12 years in the Marine Corps, it was, I'm going to go to Microsoft. That was it. That, what are you going to do? I don't know, but that's where I want to be. And I decided that I wanted to go back into tech, but I wanted to do something where I can talk to people, I can help people, I can bring people along and just contribute like goodness out. That was my thought process at the time. And I landed somewhere in Microsoft where I could do that. However, I didn't have the people part. So I was, I was doing great things. I was with a great organization and the organization was doing great things. They were helping people, but I miss talking to people. So I went out on this venture to like, let me go find people to talk to. I want to be customer facing. I want to be, I want to be out. I want to be in the community. I want to be talking. And I landed here in Fast Track for Azure. I love my org now because I get to talk to Everybody, profits, nonprofits, uh, tech for social good, uh, schools, the Boys and Girls Clubs, just, just places where we get to literally see the things that we're doing come to fruition. And when I got here, I'm, like the imposter syndrome was real because I'd spent so much time in the military that I would come and I would just sit at my desk and be trying to figure out what I was doing there. You know, my boss would look at me and she'd be like, what are you doing here? I was like, I work here. She's like, I know you work here. I hired you. And then I, were, I really wouldn't know why I was here and I had to struggle to figure out my why again. So I say that to say, it doesn't matter what your background is, where you came from, what you do, you know, anyone who knows me at work knows that I'm, I'm on skates. I'm, I'm always on skates. That's, that's what I do. I mentor on skates. I work on skates. Sometimes I'll be on customer calls, you know, won't have my camera on or we'll have my camera on and I'll just be listening. And they're like, why are you always on skates? Well, cause I have anxiety. And in order for me to maintain my anxiety, I maintain fluid motion, movement. So I'm, I'm usually moving. So nothing can stop you but you. And if you, you want to code, code. You want to develop, develop. If you want to build, build. But you have to do something. And the only thing that is going to stop you, that's going to block you, that's going to tell you that you're not good enough is yourself. Because anything that's put in front of you, you can either go around, go through, go over, or you can turn back around and walk the other way. But I promise if you just keep going, you're going to learn it. You're going to know it. You're going to overcome it. Like, this is a beautiful, beautiful community to be in. There's no, it doesn't matter if you've been out of the workforce for 10 years. If you've been out of the workforce for 10 years, I guarantee you've been doing something. You've been building a skill somewhere else. And it's very, very easy to just jump right in. All you have to do is take that first step forward. And once you take that first step forward, you don't ever have to go back. So thank you for your time. I appreciate being able to sit here and chat with you all. I'll be in the comments in a little while on Twitch. I'm going to kick it over to April. Hey, everyone. My name is April Spate, and I'm a senior cloud advocate on the spatial computing technical team here at Microsoft. I transitioned into the tech industry seven years ago. Prior to coming into tech, I worked in the luxury fashion industry as both a menswear stylist as well as a visual merchandiser. Since transitioning into tech, I've taken on a variety of roles in project management as well as being a systems analyst, a program manager, and now today here in developer advocacy. Absolutely love it. 
One thing that I'm often asked is, how did I transition into working with extended reality, especially since I don't have a developer background? Well, today I'm here to tell you that story of how I got into the XR industry. And I will say it all started with a tweet on Twitter. So for starters, I joined Microsoft in February 2019 as a senior program manager with the docs.microsoft.com team. My area of focus was interactive features for the documentation platform. So as I mentioned, I didn't have a developer background, nor did I have a CS degree. I was actually coding in my free time, and I did it because I thought it was fun. That summer, I took a trip back to the East Coast to visit my family, and of course, while waiting in the terminal for a delayed flight, I decided to get on Twitter and scroll and see what was going on just to pass some time. I happened to have came across a really cool HoloLens 2 demo that integrated uh, speech translation, and what happened was that the speaker could speak in their native language, and then it would be translated to another language on the receiver's end. So thought that was absolutely cool. I instantly went to Twitter and I asked everyone, what was it that I needed to learn in order to do what I had just saw? Fortunately, the response was plentiful. I got a lot of feedback from the XR community on how to get started, and that also led to me being invited to a workshop that Magic Leap was hosting that upcoming weekend. So I agreed to go to the workshop. Only problem was that I didn't have C-sharp experience and I didn't know Unity at all. So essentially, I had a five-day cram session of learning this new programming language as well as this new development platform for gaming. And it might have been a very difficult, intense struggle, but I actually finished it in time for the workshop and I felt that I had just enough knowledge to get started. Turns out I knew a lot more than I thought I did and the workshop went pretty well. Shortly after that, I met up with some folks that worked in Microsoft within the area of mixed reality as well as spatial computing. And I got a chance to actually try out a HoloLens on my own for the very first time. Absolutely thought that was cool. I stayed in touch with those individuals and I also had a mentor at Microsoft that helped me get ready for that next step in my career, which happened to turn out to be developer advocacy. I also connected with my actual manager that I had at the time, and we put together a career development plan that would help me prepare for that next role. Fortunately, later that year, earlier, let's say here 2019, the opportunity presented itself and I made the transition over to my now team, which is within spatial computing. Shortly after joining that team, I attended MIT Reality Hack, and that was my very first hackathon ever. Didn't know what to expect, but it was probably one of the best experiences I've ever had since being in this industry, I would say. Myself and three other individuals, we created a VR learning experience app that's designed for children to help with children with dysgraphia as well as dyslexia, and it helps with their letter formation and their word recognition. Completely shocked that we actually won two categories at that hackathon, and I will say that gave me the confident boost that I needed walking into my now role in developer advocacy. One thing I will definitely say is where I'm at today definitely took a village. Making this career transition, especially into this whole new different area of tech would not have been possible without the help of everyone that has helped and contributed resources, folks that I met with along the way, whether it be online or in person, having people behind the scenes that are rooting for me and are helping me make connections, that definitely made a big difference. When it comes to career transitions, it truly takes a village. It's not something that I feel that everyone should just do on their own. If you have the opportunity to work with others, pair with others, network with others, definitely do it. That's 100% how I got to where I am today. I want to wish you all the best of luck in your career transitions wherever you are on your journey. And if you want to stay connected, come find me on Twitter at Vogue and Code. And you can also connect with me as well on my website, which is www.vogueandcode.com. Until then, you all take care. Thank you so much for allowing April, Danny, and I to come share some inspiration and energy with you all. I'm going to kick it back over to Seth and Donna. All right. Hello. Wow, I feel like I can do I anything. <laughs> um, those stories are so inspiring because all of these people had complete, full lives before tech. And they realize, hey, you know what? There's so much opportunity out there. There's so much opportunity to get a great job that'll last me forever. 
a great paying job that'll last me forever, and one where I can really pursue all of these like curiosities I have about how things work in the world. Although I will, yeah. there is one I do need to make a correction to mm -hmm. something somebody said. Uh -huh. If someone showed up to a job mm -hmm. interview smelling like chicken yeah. and I knew they made it, they mm -hmm. would be hired on the spot. Immediately I'm just hired. Saying, Immediately. To throw that yeah. out. We uh, just had a long discussion about what we're going to order for lunch, and now it's going to be fried chicken. Thank <laughs> yeah, you, Danny. That was it is awesome. going to be fried chicken. Love that. We're and here, here's the thing. Eggs. like, There are so many of you out there thinking, nah, tech, I can't do tech. No. No, we actually mm -hmm. need everyone, yes. right? Because there are problems that everyone yeah. needs solved, mm -hmm. and tech is a good way to answer it.